Hi, welcome to another video brought to you by TurboCamaro.ca. Uh, so as you can see, we've got the fully built up Chevy 250 engine here. It's in the 67 Camaro. Uh, it's working well, no major problems with the exception of a bit of an oil burn. I contribute that to just a horrible valve seal design. The O-rings just aren't working for me. I've got some kind of a problem in there somewhere. So instead of monkeying around with it again, I'm going to do what I should have done in the first place and go to a positive seal setup. At the same time, we're going to be doing exhaust seats and uh, larger exhaust valves. It'll be the 1.84 uh, intake and 1.6 exhaust valves. So should get a little bit of a performance increase with that as well. Another issue I believe I have is a little bit of a vacuum leak at the manifolds. So the exhaust and intake manifold uh, sort of conjoin at the head. And I think that just the way they're put together, there's a bit of a gap somewhere, like ever so slight. So I want to deal with that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take all those parts to the machine shop and have them do all the necessary fittings for to make that stuff All right, work. so about an hour and a half later, we are with the head removed. You can see here, look in the cylinders, see some definite oil burning going on there. Not horrible, but some, obviously I need to wipe this out. This is still dirty, like some of this stuff here is gonna come off, obviously, so. Uh, but for the most part, it looks pretty good still, um, considering it had this much oil burn for this long. I'm not super surprised by the condition. There were some challenges uh, getting it out. I um, had to obviously take the power string pump and shove it to the side. Uh, just, just general stuff, carburetor had to come off, I had to take off the oil catch can, uh, that was a bit annoying. Uh, the manifolds had to come off, carburetor, all that stuff. You can see it over here in my big mess pile. Uh, so there's the head, you can see here, dirty for the most part. You can see some of the uh, gasket seal it used on there, it's still kind of flaking off, but uh, for the most part it's not too bad. Be using the same springs, they're still the performance springs that I used from the very beginning. So I'll be dealing with those. Uh, obviously, new valves, valve seats, things like that. So um, you see here, there's the plugs and the rods. The carburetor looks a little bit dark inside. Obviously, it's to do with the mixture that's going in. The unfortunate exhaust manifold looks pretty, pretty poor. Um, not much I can do about that. It's oil splash and burn. The intake looks fine, you can see it here. Something I'll be having the machine shop do is check the uh, how flush this is. You can see along the edge here, the leaning edge where it connects to the head. I'm not convinced that that's perfect. This, uh, pouring polishing, but before I get to that, I have a quick sort of a tip and I'll show you how I do this. It might be different than how you do it. Maybe you do it a better way, I'd love to know. Either way, what I've got here, I've just got a cupcake tray and it's got, uh, of course, 12 spots for the 12 valves that I have and the 12 uh, um, springs and everything else. So this is perfect for what I'm doing. And as you can see, I used to use, I've seen in previous videos, this, uh, I don't know, it's OTG or whatever brand it is, uh, universal style spring compressor. Um, total garbage. I will never use that tool again because today I decided to make... Uh, this sort of 90 degree flat bar uh, spring compressor. General idea, there's a hole. I've got an elongated oval hole here and then I just used the grinder to cut away a big slot in the end of it. Okay, so the head's all stripped down. Now you can see here that the uh, ports are still pretty dirty. I just kind of went over them very quickly with uh, sort of a detailing sanding bit. It's a 36 grit Dremel bit. It's like a wheel. Looks um, a lot like this one, but it's a 36, 36 grit. So it takes off a lot of the crud, but you can see here, I've still saw some issues from when I did the boss removal a while back. Uh, they're definitely still very rough. I haven't even started yet. So you can see here, just an idea. I'd be worried for a moment. Uh, just an idea what they look like inside now. Same with the chambers. The valve surfaces still look pretty good, but they're gonna get expanded anyway for the new valve, so it doesn't really matter. But you can get a look at the see there. That's what it looks like for now. Just gonna clean this up, and then I'll hit it with a uh, lower, probably 80 grit sanding bit, 
and we'll see what they look like after that. All right, so I've gone ahead and started to do some polishing and, and grinding here. Uh, what I'm using is the uh, these carbide bits for the Dremel. Uh, using the Dremel for the entirety of it. I was going to try using the drill and using some of these bits, but they're just they're just junk. So these carbide bits, specifically this style, I don't know if you can see, see that all that well. There you go. So that sort of style there. They're just a small little Dremel bit, but they're they are carbide. So they do quite a bit of damage if you want them to, even though they're small. Something like that will work well in some of the grooves. But the general idea is with these is that you want to try to smooth them out the best you can. Now you can see this is the obviously the underside. Um, I've gone and I've sort of used the carbide bit to just sort of smooth out this area here and around this. And this is uh, obviously one of the intake ports. You can see it joining here. Uh, these are not polished by any means. This is just straight carbide right at the moment. So you can see there's even some waves where I've you know, gone side to side and whatnot. But you just want to try to get it smooth with the carbide bit so that there's no rough spots, no really rough spots, and that you actually got the contouring right. Because you really want it to flow. Like this is the intake, so everything's going to be coming in through here. And then the exhaust. So I try to work on the intakes mostly from this angle. Obviously, some of the flatter spots above will have to do from above. But uh, I try to work a lot in this area because this is where it's all going to come in. And same with the exhaust. I like to uh, try to get really up in here and specifically smooth out the area right where the valve is. Because I find in mine, the casting is really bad here. So use the carbide bit. Do that. Once you're done with the carbide bits... I moved on to a 60 grit actual sanding um, wheel and it's, um, I specifically leave it hanging off the edge so that I can get a little bit of fold up here and allows you to kind of press it against some of the other spots which is good. Um, after that I'm going to be jumping into an abrasive wheel, uh, something like this. And you can see these are the, I think this is 180 grit, so I go from 60, uh, sorry no, Go from 60 and then I get a disc like this, 120 grit abrasive wheel. And then with that, then I go to 180 and then I have a 220 one of these and then I also have a 320 one of these. So I'll finish of off on that. Video here. There's like a million and a half videos on how to do porting and polishing and things like that. Uh, so as you can see, um, it's done. Uh, done enough for me. I'm not uh, going to spend a million years on this by any means. Um, you could spend, you know, 30 hours if you wanted to doing something like this. And for me, it's just not worth it. I will say, in my own defense, that I just used WD-40 on this and cleaned it with a very dirty rag. Uh, so there's chunks of wood and, uh, and just carbon and all kinds of stuff in there right now. So if you see a dark spot, it's probably a chunk of dirt. Uh, obviously, the areas you see here with the hole at the bottom of the port, that's where the lump sits. So not a big deal. I didn't spend a ton of time on those spots, such as, you know, here and here. They look a little rougher, and they're not quite as shiny and smooth as the other parts of the port. I also found that the, um, the valve guide... Uh, boss that's sort of hanging down there that was pretty tricky for me too with the Dremel just because they didn't really have the appropriate uh, bit for that I could use the carbide bit but then I'm just chopping away at it and that was fine to get some of the carbon off but it wasn't really much of a uh, and I didn't do a very good smooth job and the sanding uh, wheels I had just couldn't really get them but either way it's still way better than it was all of the side ridge lines are gone uh, it doesn't present well in this video, and, and that's fine with for me. I'm just happy that um, it's nice and smooth, and hopefully it'll last a little longer as far as uh, carbon buildup goes. I'll be doing the combustion chambers once I get it back from the machine shop, um, but it's going to be the same general process. You're just going to clean it out and then just go through the grits, you know, whether it be you know, 30, 60, 80, and then you get it to 120, 180, 220, 320, and then uh, by the time you're done, it'll look, you know, like a mirror. Much smaller surface area. Something to consider would be um, material removal on this. You wouldn't want to achieve that too much because you could affect your um, compression ratio. Um, yeah, so you just got to be somewhat cautious. With all right, that. so all the parts are back from the machine shop. Before I get to the head, I'll show you. This is the intake exhaust manifold. I actually repainted them since uh, getting it because it, um, yeah, it got shredded more or less. 
in the resurfacing process. So they more or less hooked it up to their machine and they resurfaced the front leading edge. And you can see here, um, it's got tape on it still, but it's that's the edge that got resurfaced flat. They left it all as one piece so that how I attach it to the motor is exactly how it's going to uh, be flush. So happy with that. The head got resurfaced in the front face. Unfortunately, some of my paint got in the, some of the ports. I thought I'd masked it well, but apparently did not. Uh, everything's got new liners and there's these uh, inserts as well. And um, obviously going with a positive seal, you can see the recessed uh, area there for, this is uh, cylinder five. So I've done cylinder six already. Uh, seals are installed. I've got all the spring heights exactly where they need to go. Um, I've actually got a good sheet I've used to calculate the spring heights. So for measuring the height from the right from the deck all the way to the top of the retainer and then subtracting the retainer, just a quick little calculation sheet for keeping track of it. I'll post that on uh, turbocamero.ca. And uh, as well here, I'm going to show you how to install these positive seals. I couldn't find a lot of YouTube videos on showing exactly how to do this. A lot of engines use the O-ring still or they use umbrellas, but uh, this particular engine obviously is using uh, positives now, which is great. So what I do is I like to take the stem cover. This uh, comes with the box of positive seals. These are Sealed Power ST 2001s, uh, and it's a rubber, I think it's, uh, I don't know if it's actually rubber or if it's uh, one of the other composite rubbers that's higher density, but either way, rubber with a Teflon insert. You could go with a full Teflon uh, positive seal if you wanted. Uh, these had high reviews from everywhere I looked and the machine shop I went with suggested them, so that's great. Uh, what I do uh, inside that comes a little stem cover, so that slips over top of the um, top of the valve stem and make sure it's nice and snug. And then I take a little bit of oil, just gonna dip my finger, just give it a little lubrication. Try to preserve these if I can, because I think they get shredded pretty quick. You're going to want to make sure as well that uh, there's something underneath the valve so they don't get pressed down when you do this. It's important that the uh, seal doesn't get pressed down. So you press the stem down right now, it actually will push the valve in and it could push the plastic cover off, which will result in damage. So you then just put the uh, seal right on top of it. I like to just try to get it on by hand so I can get an idea of how snug it is. I can't, of course I can't do it on video now. There we go, so on there, and then there's an install tool. I, mine came with it, but I have a feeling that the machine shop just threw it in, but you can get this install tool. You could probably use a socket or something else. You just push it down, you can see it slides right down, and now it's almost on, almost on the recess, and you'll see this metal spring here. What's gonna happen when I press this down, just clips straight over and if you look at the back side you can see the separation right there and that means that it's actually opened up to fit around the uh, the recess so that way it's actually tightening on there and giving you a snug fit so you shouldn't be able to just pull it off I mean you probably could if you tried hard enough but it's on there good now and that's pretty much it so now I should be able to with some finesse slide off the plastic cover right, here. Once you get the plastic cover off here, once you get this off, uh, you want to put your spring on. I like to make sure that it's clean. I've already kind of inspected all these. They're the original performance springs. Get them right over top. Make sure they're seated on the bottom. You don't want to get it caught on the top of the seal and have it get rip the seal off when you try to compress it. And then you want a um, retainer cover here on top. Again, clean. I'm working outside so things can only be as clean as they are. And I put my big bar. Obviously, you can use your compression tool of choice. This is what I'm using this time around. Same way, pretty much, as you take them off. If you have one of those socket tools or something like that, it works great for me. This has been working pretty well. Um, what I like to do is try to get this screwed down as much as I can. In this case, I should have a socket for it, but this will work. And I like to try to get the one closest to the front better because just the way it presses it down, I like to try to make it so that I get that side in first and just try to rock it in. Like, like oops, not quite. Just like, huh, there it goes, just like that. And then I find the other one. And now the back one is usually a lot easier. A little bit tighter of squeeze, but it has more gap. So once I get kind of lined up where I want it, just like that, I can kind of just press on it. And you can kind of feel it seat just like that. 
and that's it. You take your bar off and then move on to the next one. All right, the manifolds are painted. The head is reassembled and painted as well. It's all ready to go back together, except here I've got the engine bay and the pistons tops are looking a little bit shabby still. Uh, there's just some burnt oil on there from uh, the oil, oil loss I was having. I'm just going to use some regular carb choke cleaner, specifically carb cleaner. Don't want anything too crazy. This is just a regular store-bought stuff. Nothing, uh, you don't need, it's not like a dipping chemical or anything. Just spray a little bit on the cloth, you know, just a clean cloth, and just wipe the tops of the pistons down. And then I like to use a painting stick because they don't really uh, splinter very easily. And then just sort of just scrape the tops off. It, it's very, very easy. You don't need any kind of uh, steel or a wire brush or anything. That's just, you're going to just ruin your pistons. Just use, uh, like I said, plastic wood scrape or something like that. And clean up the pistons, the deck surface. You can clean up the gasket. Just basically clean up everything so that it's, uh, you know, like new. We're, we're going to try to do this as best we can. All right, so the head's all bolted down. Uh, the lifters are adjusted. I got um, 90 foot-pounds on the front, too, because of the known... Uh, weakness. The lump ports are at 85 foot-pounds and the rest are at 95. All right, here we are. It's all reassembled. Uh, last I said is we're doing the manifolds and as you can see here the manifolds are definitely installed. I actually had to modify the brackets and bolts slightly so they'd fit in the holes. I think the machine shop must have adjusted the way I had them flushed and I just could not for the life of me get them to go in there properly. But now it is um, it's good. It's really nice and tight. Everything's to spec. Uh, no leaks that I can find, including the donut gasket, which is shocking because I'm not a big fan of that do donut gasket setup. But uh, either way, everything's really good. Uh, beyond that, I had a challenge. I discovered throughout the course of installing the power string pump that the alternator bracket, or sorry, the alternator post for the battery, you can see the yellow and red wire about the center of the screen. Uh, where it connects to the back of the alternator, the post had actually rounded itself out and in the process of trying to tighten it, it snapped right off. Um, so then I dismantled the alternator and discovered that uh, the whole plate on the inside was just was just corroded and destroyed. So uh, as much as it looked decent inside, beyond that, I just needed a new alternator. So I've since gone and replaced it, it was about 75 bucks Canadian. Uh, which uh, is, is not bad. I mean, really a peace of mind. And the most fantastic thing about that is, is it solved my wiring issue. I had problems with um, problems with the headlights, the stereo was cutting out. So I was having a grounding shorting problem and, and that's been it. I've tested, drove in it now numerous times and it's working great. Uh, that being said, the whole engine is working great. I'm really happy with how everything's come together. I made adjustments to the carburetor already. Uh, I've gone from 65 jets to 62. It's still running a little bit rich, especially on, um, on shifting. But uh, I think going down to 60s for jets and primary will probably be good. And then I can start working on the tune of the secondaries. But overall, very happy with this combination. Uh, I might need to play with the belts a little bit. I'm not a big fan of how the alternator is... Uh, is running there it, it's spinning properly but it just doesn't give much push on that belt for uh, for grip but we'll see i'll keep an eye on that and uh, yeah everything's really good so any questions about this setup uh, feel free to let me know we're coming to the end of the bulk of the engine build and we're going to, have to get into some other things so uh, any questions now is a great time again it's uh, turbo camaro 67 on twitter and facebook and also uh, turbocamaro.ca is a great way to get a hold of me or just find out general info and uh, turbocharge camaro at gmail.com i know that's um, all a bit of a mouthful but uh, if you're interested i have lots of time and i'm happy to answer any questions and thank you very much for watching